All right, so this is week 3A, green screen keying, and this is what your final project should pretty much look like. All right, let's go back to the beginning and start fresh. So the first thing I want to do is import the two working elements for this project. Import file. And that's my Trevor green screen and let's go mountain area animations. If you haven't received them via we transfer just yet, please text me and let me know. I'm sending both of these elements via WeTransfer because they're moving videos and they will not work on eCampus. eCampus doesn't give me the storage space to send these to you. So check your email, make sure you have a WeTransfer from me and you're able to download these two elements. All right, so second bullet point. We don't want to make a new composition. We want to drag the Trevor K. Green clap clip on to create a new sequence. And I have it kind of illustrated on page two. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you now. Take this clip, drag it down to here. And what that does is that actually turns my clip of Trevor into a sequence. I'll do that again for you here. Drag it onto that icon there. And there you go. And now I'm at 200%. Obviously, I don't want to do that. I just want to do fit. So now I can see my entire composition. All right, I'm going to select the rectangle tool up here and I'm going to make sure that my Trevor clip is selected in my timeline and what I'm going to do is you'll notice we have this extra stuff when we shot Trevor over the green screen you know the green screen wasn't exactly full screen you can actually kind of see a fire extinguisher there in the background and a light switch so we need to mask that stuff out so using the rectangle tool I'm going to create a mask from green corner to green corner so it's selected here and the clip right about there, clicking and holding by the way. And I'm going to give me as much green screen as possible. So I'm going to come back right about there. And you'll notice it's all green. There's no wall. It's transparent behind me, which is a good thing. So I'm going to go to effect, keying. And then, whoop, effect, keying, and then key light, and it might be 1.2, it doesn't matter what version you have. And now this menu appears and the effect controls pop up. So we need to green screen our, or pick our key light color, in this case we want it to be green. So I click on the eyedropper, I click near Trevor's face, and I've keyed out most of the green. Now we have to mess with it a little bit, and you'll notice some of the hat is actually gone up in and around here. So I'm going to play back over here with the settings, and I'm going to go and give it some, you know, and you'll notice a little bit more is gone, and my screen balance, give it a little bit of color in his face. Notice the hat, as I add balance, is growing. It's coming back a little bit better. Now it's starting to get a little rough. So right about there, that's not bad. I can live with that. Scroll to the beginning. You'll notice the right here in my musket, you can see a little bit of the grain. So maybe we crank it up a little bit more. Maybe I'm going to play with a little bit more of the inside and out, you know, some of the spill. So I can clip the black a little bit, not the direction I want to go. Maybe I want to clip a little bit of the white. Now it looks like Trevor is keyed out mostly. And if you look here at the project settings screen mat, I messed. I didn't clip the black, but I messed with the clip white. That was initially at 100. It's not the worst key in the world, but we can do better. 58 is what it ended up being as a good key setting. So those were all listed in bullet points there. So now I'm going to create a new solid background and I want to make it black just because it's the easiest to work with. You can make it dark blue, you can make it, don't make it green, that's Marshall's color. But you can make it whatever color you want. Let's just go with black because black is what things key over better well. So layer, new, solid. Even if you want to make it like a charcoal black, you can. I'm just going to go full black. Because what black does is it will hide some discrepancies you may have. 
and now it looks like we shot Trevor over a green screen. If you want to turn off, you know, your effect, you come up here. This little effects button here turns off the effect completely. So you can see how successful we may or may not be with our key. All right, now I'm going to add the Let's Go Mountaineer animation, and I'm going to make it my second layer. Up here at Project, here's my Let's Go Mountaineer animation. I'm going to drop it below Trevor. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn off the image of Trevor here, and I click this eyeball and turn it off. Select my Let's Go Mountaineer animation, and you'll notice it comes in and comes out just like that. And I'm going to move it maybe over to the side here. Actually, actually, I'm going to move it to the upper right corner there, like that. And I'm going to duplicate it four times. Selecting it, I'm going to hit Command D four times. One, two, three, four. And now I'm going to move the various animations. I have this one selected. Here, like that. I have this one selected. I could move it over there like that. Using, of course, the selection tool. This one down here. And I'm going to move this one here. And I'm going to space them out so that they come in at different times. So they all come in at the same time. Well, I want them to kind of separate and come in and out at the different times. So moving it ahead a little bit, just they're like that, they're like that, they're like that. And you'll notice I'm clicking and holding and dragging over. I'm not doing this. That's trimming it, and we don't want to trim it. We just want it to appear later in our sequence. So now, I have spacebar. And now you'll notice they all come in at different times, and they all disappear around different times. But I'm a little too spaced out on this last one because you'll notice when I get to the end of my sequence, it's not completely disappeared. So let me tighten it up a little bit. Back there. I do say in the lesson, 10 frames each. And that way they're all in and out before the one second mark so that they're gone completely. All right, bring the Trevor animation back in. And now we have Trevor in front of what appears to be a screen of animations saying, let's go Mountaineers. And now, if you may have noticed a subtle, we're trying to make this into maybe like a, a looping thing and what we want to do is make one white frame of video to kind of give it some separation in terms of the beginning and the end. So we've spaced out our animations. I'm going to make a layer new solid. I'm going to make it white this time. And this is just an old old editing trick you can use in Premiere and whatever you want. And I'm going to make the white solid my very top layer. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to drag it all the way to the end so that it appears for one frame of video. Look at me expanding here. One frame is 20 at the 29 frame mark. So that that last frame is just one frame. And it's not immediately noticeable to the naked eye, but watch as we get to the end of the timeline, watch that flash frame of white, how it just kind of makes an optical separation before it's just a bad cutting loop, but now that optical separation of one white frame makes it, uh, makes it look pretty good. All right, if you have questions, text me. Good luck.